uh, our first speaker will be Oscar Mendez. Oscar is the is the CEO and founder of, of Stratio, and uh, he's uh, he's he's the founder of Stratio, but he's too the president of uh, of the place we are today, the, the Big Things Conference. So so uh, let me begin with you. G give us some some uh, some views. Give me give us some some light. How a, a company like some of, of them will be watching now uh, now uh, when they they are thinking in beginning with this uh, amazing project of artificial intelligence, what kind of problems related to ethics uh, are important to take into account? Maybe from the beginning uh, to, to, of the project to the delivery of the project, what kind of factors are important? Thank you. It's yeah, a pleasure to be here with you. So I think it is very important end-to-end -to, -end to understand the problem. The problem uh, to do or to use AI in a, with an ethical behavior is uh, coming from, from the data. So end to end, when you are asking for some customers uh, about the data, uh, the, the entitlements, what, uh, uh, when the, those customers are giving their data, they say you can use your data for this. And this is the beginning of the problem. Okay, because I am giving you my data to use it to do a propensity model, or fraud, or just reporting, or improve the services you are giving me. Uh, so it, it comes when you get the data, if you have the entitlements from the customer, and where after that you are using the data. And here, the companies what we are seeing in the market, they are completely lost. They are not able to, to use the data to do a model, AI model could be anything, and then to assure that uh, they are using the data of the customers just with the entitlements that those customers gave at the beginning of the process. So this is one of the worst problems about data ethics. Very few companies are able to uh, uh, assure that the ethical behavior, the, the use of the data, is being used for the things the customer allowed that data to, to be used. And this is a huge problem because they are not able even to do it from the beginning data acquisition to the model building and to the use of the algorithms. And, and this is something, it, it doesn't matter the market, the sector, the size of the company. Companies do not have the technology or the organization to fulfill ethical behavior or ethical data, data behavior. And this is a huge problem in our opinion that we are trying to solve with most of these big companies. They don't know how to solve the, the, this huge problem. So let, let, let me switch to, to London. Sara, Sara Fernandez from, from Tableau is there, is, 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 is in London now. Hi, hi Sara, how are you doing? Hello, hi. Everything, everything fine in London? Everything good. Well, in my flat at least. Outside, okay. uh, not that good. But okay. <laughs> I think okay. Okay. we learn okay. to be with that. Okay. So I, I like to know your, your, your opinion. Tableau is, is, is working, your customers are working with, with data uh, always. It's, it's the core of your, of your projects. What kind of aspects are, are, are relevant, are important when, uh, when talking about ethics in these data projects that you are implementing? Yes. Uh, in the last few years, not only in the Tableau world, worldwide, we all have seen projects that were a fail on an ethical side, mainly because of one of the, the following areas. Actually, Oscar uh, talked about the data collection part, that is a very important one. Uh, when collecting personal data, do individuals know what I'm collecting, to what level of detail, can it be limited? Here, GDPR attempts tried and uh, to, to solve, but data ethics isn't restricted to data collection or even data governance. It also applies to how data is interpreted and acted upon. So the first area I mentioned, uh, and Oscar also covered in more detail, is data collection. The second area of concern is data governance. Aspects such as who owns this data, uh, if it's public information, do I make it accessible while protecting identities enough? Also, it's very important the transparency about the origins of this data and its limitations. The third area that is very hot topic at the moment is uh, data sharing. Uh, here, um, let's consider biases and whether or not 
facts are being presented clearly. Ethical visual, visual best practices must be applied, avoiding perpetuating biases. Let me give you an example. During the COVID, we've seen a lot of visualizations of data and uh, red was commonly used to represent the, the, the number of cases and the increase in cases. Red in some cultures uh, is associated with danger and extremes, and this could incite uh, some, some sort of panic in the audience. Um, so this is just a, a one example where we should be careful. And um, another important point is, is the data I am presenting relevant to the audience that I am presenting? The last point, uh, so I mentioned data collection, governance, data sharing is data decision making. Consider how we are presenting the data. Are the limits of the data understood and does it fit the question? Sometimes data can be, can be quite deceptive. So in conclusion, both ethics and philosophy provide a process uh, for looking into potential value conflicts. And uh, most companies already have in place uh, ethical codes uh, that uh, regulate how they are, operate their business. These ethical codes must be and are being extended to data. And here, technology can be an ally on extending and implementing ethical rules to data. Okay, so thanks, thanks a lot. It's important for, for all of you to keep the, the, the microphone open all the time, so the people from production will be will be uh, uh, using this. But but you, it's important that to keep the microphone always open. One of you, I didn't say who, it's closed. So please open it. <laughs> okay, okay. Let, let, let let's continue the conversation. Jose Luis Flores was here uh, yesterday, uh, giving an, an amazing presentation. I'd like to go a little bit beyond the data because in, a, in an artificial intelligence project, there's much more things than data, and the impact can go uh, beyond and have an impact in the future of, of, of uh, employment and in very very different factors. Uh, from your perspective, uh, companies are beginning to be to be aware of this data ethics, but are that aware of these no data related topics but that have an impact in, in ethics, like uh, 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 many different roles? Uh, what's, your, what's your opinion? Yeah, I, I think they, they start to be aware of that because of, uh, of the news, basically, you know, because we have news about uh, problems in terms of bias, in terms of fairness, in algorithms created and used by very big companies like Amazon, like Google, and so so it has a qu uh, quite a big mediatic impact. No? And as a consequence, yes, I think the the they are more concerned and more aware about what what are the dangers and the problems with the use of AI on on data. No? Uh, I think one of the problems we have uh, is uh, there is not a, let's say a, a common methodology, a systematic methodology. Uh, that is followed by all the data science teams in all the different companies. Even in the same companies, there is there probably is not the same way they approach the problems now as the way they approach the problem five years ago. No? And, and it's quite difficult to keep a, a governance, to keep an accountability on the on the processes. So that they have, I, I would say that there are some challenges that uh, we have to to cover. Uh, if we want to have some degree of control over the, the result of the of the AI. But I think the, the executives will start realizing the, the, the potential threats and problems that they can, can face with the, with the AI. Yeah. Okay. I think I think it's it's important this this this, this vision. Uh, I, I'd like to ask uh, Luber uh, Walkerhannon. I don't know if uh, I pronounced your name properly. Is, is Luber something like that? Yes. Would so the know? first name is Luber. Okay. Yes, okay. Fine. okay. 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 What's What's your opinion on this? It, it's It's changing the vision that companies uh, have about about this uh, this these topics related to, to 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 ethics. What's your vision? Yeah. Yes. So you know, to add on what was just said, one of the themes that I think of, and many people in my company think of, is to be able to think about this in a broader context. So, from my company's perspective we're thinking about two topics. So verification and validation for AI, which entails considering the topics of and researching the topics of interpretability, explainability, robustness and certification, where for some of our customers that may relate to their models possibly versus their data. But speaking of data, also taking into consideration data privacy and also the amount of rigor 
and trust that's applied to many of those topics, whether it's the models or the data. There's also another thing that my company considers it's responsible AI and connected to that you have the topics of fairness and bias. So one of the key areas where MathWorks hears about responsible responsible AI, pardon me, is mainly in computational finance, where this tends to arise where decisions are made related to human beings, related to people. So in terms of these two categories that my company is thinking of, they definitely fall under verification and validation for AI, as well as looking into responsible AI, because in general, we focus on engineering and science, which means customers of ours are typically focused on a number of applications that don't involve dealing with necessarily people where ethics would arise overall. There are some related applications, but that's not typically our focus. Mm -hmm. I think one important point today, and it's a debate that it's open, it's how this uh, should impact in regulation. If we need new regulations, if we, if we need more regulation, even if we need some regulation. So I, I, I like to ask to, to Nicolas Maillard, he, he works for, for Databrick, uh, how is this, uh, what's your opinion on this, on this debate about the, the aspects that, that companies are taking into account and about if this will have an impact in future regulation? Okay, um, so in terms of regulation, I guess the place we can start is regulations on using data and using data to make decisions predate any notion of machine learning or artificial intelligence. Uh, there have been a number of regulations in different um, verticals and companies and industries that have ranged from everything to decision-making to how to apply it. And now we're looking into artificial intelligence. Now, where, where that is important is because now the amount of data and the speed at which we can consume it and we can um, correlate it to make decisions, make those decisions incredibly um, impactful and incredibly rapid. Uh, so the, no the notion of regulations as we see it have evolved with our usage of our technologies and of our data. Uh, we think we've seen things like uh, the CAP Act or the GDPR Act in Europe uh, really trailblaze that notion of how who is an owner and who is a consumer and what are their rights and what are their uh, responsibilities towards data. But as we go forward, that really very much very focuses on the data itself, not necessarily a uh, data built system or a model or something that makes a decision off of obfuscated, obfuscated data. And we are really a lot of interesting in banking. For, exa for, for example, where you need to be able to show auditors and explain how your decision making was made to be. Was it impacted by a bias? Were you, were you able to recreate the, the environment in which it was built? And can you pre prove that it was fair and it was an ethical in the way you made the decision and the impact it will have on the society and the people consuming? And that's incredibly important in terms of regulation. But regulations, at the end of the day, only regulate the moral. Uh, obligations we have to each other as, as a human society. And what I mean by that is regulations can only go so far as a notion of trust and of sharing of information between organizations that offer um, solutions and organizations or people that consume these solutions. So it is both on the offer and the servicer and the consumer to actually share those notions of regulations. I know that makes sense, but you, we have to take that in a slightly broader context. Thank you. I, I'd like to go back to, to, to Oscar uh, and asking you about the, the, the impact this ethic access has in the, the, the direct impact that they have in business. Because at the end of the day, these kind of projects are involving most of the time final customers, final clients, uh, users. Uh, do you think there is a real business impact of these uh, ethical aspects we are considering, we are debating today? Yes, for sure. I mean, uh, customers and people uh, every day they are uh, uh, they care more about how data is used, ethical behavior, and well, the, the focus of this event is technology for good. So, is my data being used for something good? Uh, is my data used for the things I I give the entitlement, the permission to to do it or or, or to use it? Uh, and the answer could be yes. Okay, they can uh, fulfill an ethical behavior, uh, and then uh, I can check it and, and and see what they are doing with my data, and then I trust the company. 
Uh, but if there is any lack of ethical behavior, any scandal, any thing that happened, and then uh, uh, customers, people, they uh, really value all this every day a lot more. And then uh, if this company has an ethical behavior and is doing with my data what I want for my data to be used, and this one now, I will go from this company to other company, other services, other products, so the business impact is really, really very big. Uh, with social media, social uh, networks and all this, uh, it is something strange. It's just we are giving entitlement without reading what uh, the data is going to be used. Uh, GDPR is helping in Europe, but in reality, they are using different ways to go uh, and to, to take the, the, the entitlement in a not very clear way. So we could talk about social networks and how the Googles, the Facebooks are doing it uh, in a different way because uh, we are giving permission without reading anything. But for normal companies, banks, insurance, telecom, health, and everything not uh, digital uh, social networks or big ones, uh, ethical behavior is key. Uh, for the revenues, the churn, the fidelity of customers, and so on. Uh, Jose Luis, yesterday in your, your presentation, in your keynote, you, you opened this, this debate between uh, privacy and freedom and health and all this stuff. From a customer perspective, there's a not that different debate. Uh, because because we allow the, the use of our data as customers by all these uh, social networks that that, that we're, we are commenting, but we have but after this we all have these concerns. How how, how do you feel about this uh, debate from a customer perspective? Uh, giving our data, not giving our data. It's uh, priva It's privacy versus uh, mm -hmm. amazing experience versus uh, personalization. How, how do you perceive this debate from a customer perspective? Well, I, I think if you if you think in in us as, uh, as uh, customers, no? uh, normally if we perceive that there is a benefit for us in the very short term, something very clear, then uh, the trade-off is clear. It is not a problem for us to share our our, our data. If, if you are going to give me what's the the the, the, the best route to arrive uh, home, no, uh, driving, then well, it's way to have this information. I can save. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, even more, and it's not a problem if you're tracking my, my route. No? So I think it has to do with the benefit in the short term, and it's quite psychological and quite, and quite human behavior. When the benefit is not, or the reward is not so clear, then you start saying, well, and, and why, why do you need this information from me? And this is what has happened now with this uh, rather COVID and contact tracing apps, now that we don't see the, the benefit as, as close because it's not so, 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 so evident, no, and and then we start making questions and so on. So I think basically it has to do with that, with that, with the, with the trade off. In in any way, I think the the trend is uh, having the, the 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 customer or the citizen, no, as you prefer, in the in the center, no, being being the core of the system. And I think the trend is uh, given the power to 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 have the ownership of, of the data to the to the to the to the citizen to the consumer. No? So if we think in the new generation of recommendation, recommendation engines, if you're thinking in the, in the new generation even of, of uh, facial recognition systems and so, all of these uh, systems and solutions have in, in common that they start to, to treat the, the data of the, of, the, of the user as something that eventually can, can belong to the user and it's the user who has to, to give permission at, at any step of the process to be used for, for different purposes. No, I think that's one of the, of the main thread, trends. And I'd say that is, I think, is something that Oscar also said. I think it's not only uh, important, but it's even uh, relevant from an economic perspective. I think the companies who are able to introduce this uh, customer in the in the in the core perspective, given the ownership to the to the customer and so, are going to uh, achieve much better results. Sarah, in your, in your opinion, how, how is this process of putting customer in the center of these uh, uh, data projects? Uh, how, which is the impact, which is the business impact of these uh, uh, concerns that, that we as customers have? Well, my colleagues have covered it all. Um, 
consumers care about ethical codes and uh, they will uh, stop buying from companies if they don't agree with their ethical codes or if they don't have visibility. So I think, and I speak for myself, for myself. I, spent, I spent hours looking uh, for company values and uh, uh, their ethical codes. And if I don't find anything, I rather don't go ahead with my purchase. So I think this is more and more important. Companies to provide visibility of their human rights policies, sustainability values, company values, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I'm fully in line with what have been said previously. Let's try with with Ross. Ross, Ross Perez, Snowflakes. I don't know if you can hear me. Now, now, Ross Perez. Ross, can you hear me? Well, I don't think so. We have some kind of problem with uh, with the audio of Ross because I can hear him, but I th but I think he is not hearing me. No. Well, I I, I go back to to to, to Luber about the about these topics that, that we were commenting about this this the customers involving problems that we were, were commenting in, in your opinion in your vision uh, uh, what can we do as, as, as uh, now not as a customer as a company to give customers answers about these concerns one of the biggest items that i'd like to point out first before i even like fully answer is you know from a mathworks perspective we provide tools for customers to build ai systems and one of the biggest themes that i like to point out is you know we help support customers with their various ai related applications and in regards to ethics and being involved as a company one of the biggest themes that i've seen emerge is you know we are also in essence seeking guidance so often these general guidelines or frameworks are being discussed in terms of regulation from industry bodies such as in finance that was previously mentioned as well as the fda for medical FAA, and then yet to be determined for autonomous vehicles and many other applications. So we're looking to see in the kind of medium term or short term, what's happening in terms of these industry bodies and what they're recommending, but in the longer term to see what happens in terms of policies that are very similar to what we're seeing with data privacy regulation in the EU and to see what happens in many other parts of the world to help get this information for a framework that we can also use and that's not just in terms of what the customers are building in terms of ai systems but also in relation to ethics as well also looking to see what general ethics standards we can also help customers implement and hopefully test as well as a part of their applications so thank you i think now ross can hear me Hi, Ross. Hello. I think Hello. I think I think oh, oh yeah. no, I think I think we have a real problem with the sound there. Let's let's make a another try. Now, Ross. Yes, I I, I can hear. Yes, I, I, I can hear. Yes, I, I can. A little a little a little bit better now. A little bit better now. Uh, well, we lost you in, 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 the, in the conversation, so I'd like to know your, your opinion about this, this topic we were covering uh, just now, which is the real impact that these uh, ethic-related problems have in real business and in our relations with customers and clients. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> you can't hear me? I, I can't hear you, but hear you, it but perhaps... Hear you, but hear you. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? You hear me now? You hear me now? You hear me? No, he's not hearing me. No. We are trying to solve it. Oh, well, I'll, I'll go. I'll go for 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 the next question because because because. We don't have that much time, so we'll do our best to, to, to recover you, okay, in, 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 a few, in a few minutes. Because I hear you, but I have the feeling that you don't hear me. No. 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 No.
probably best to move on. To Oscar. Oscar, can you hear me? Oscar? Uh, I, I, I think he can hear me, but I can hear him now. Oscar? Yes. Okay, okay. I, I, I like to go beyond in the debate and in the conversation and, and going for, 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 the, for the next topic. Because uh, I think it's, it's something that is overall this conversation that we are, that we are having. Because there, there is a, a real debate today, not only in companies. I think it's, it's a debate that we have as a society about if technology is or not neutral. I have my opinion, but I'd like to know, to know yours. It's, it, is technology neutral? Are companies, and not only companies, governments, they are working with governments too, are, are they aware that te technology is no longer neutral and they have, and the, the decisions they take have a real impact in, in, in our lives? I think the, the, the topic of these years, the artificial intelligence for good, is very related to this. Do, do you think that, that, that the, the, the behavior we have as people has a direct impact, has a direct impact in all this stuff we are discussing? Well, in in reality, you could say technology by itself or per se is neutral, but technology use is not neutral at all. And this is something, uh, a debate that we could, we could talk about the different blocks uh, uh, about countries, for example, US, Asia, China, uh, or, or the European community. Uh, technology. Can we trust technology? And the answer, in my opinion, is not at all. So I will try to be very clear. Public clouds. Can you trust the data in the public clouds is not used with a political interest or national interest or uh, intelligence service interest and it will not be open? Well, we have had several news about how the NSA, the, the CIA is using data from social networks, computers, printers, whatever. So, uh, is technology uh, neutral? Technology talking about innovation, yes. Technology talking about how it is used, not at all. And to think that it is neutral is completely naive. In fact, in Europe, uh, we are uh, not investing in technology as Europe, as a block. Uh, public clouds, we are lacking behind. All data in the public clouds have serious problems about the use of the governments that those public clouds belong to, for example, talking about China or US uh, from that data. And then uh, and Europe is completely lost about this, uh, about technology investment, public clouds, uh, cryptography, where is your data, social networks. So uh, this is a big, big, big problem. And uh, we are defending ourselves with normal weapons against other countries and data, cybersecurity, uh, technology. The third worldwide war uh, will be a fight using technology. And we are relying on technology that does not belong to Europe. And this is a big, big problem, talking in a very global way. Well, I, 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 I like to ask to, to Ross Perez, uh, we have a problem with the, with the audio, probably, probably it's, the, it's the return, but we are doing our best with well, yeah, Omnichannel. So the... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry for interrupting you. No, yeah, yeah, no, okay. no, no problem. I still can't no hear anything that you're saying, but uh, I can definitely talk about the application of ethics uh, on, on the business and the relationship that uh, they have with customers. And, you know, I think one of the, the bigger questions that we see at Snowflake when, when our customers uh, are dealing are dealing with this uh, is, is across a couple of different questions. You know, of course, um, how are we looking at the way that uh, information is collected and the bias that might be, you know, ap applied as we're, as we're um, looking to, um, <clears throat> you know, use that data in... Uh, in, in analytics uh, going forward. And, um, you know, you can, 
you can definitely see that uh, the way that you you talk to your customers and the way that you communicate with them is incredibly important. So sharing data, um, you know, can definitely be a, a way that, you know, we can bring up a lot of ethical considerations uh, with sharing data because uh, obviously, you know, there's certain regulations around the way that we share data and particularly uh, with partners and with customers um, and back to them. Um, so, you know, we really have to be uh, thoughtful about the way that, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're sharing data and, and are we using technology in a way where, um, or does our technology enable us to share data in a way where we can uh, properly, you know, obfuscate the right fields um, and, and provide that data uh, in, a, in a really um, sensitive way. So there's definitely some, some complications with all of that, um, but it's something that I think most uh, organizations are, are finding their way around. Um, and as it becomes easier to share data between organizations, um, you know, the relationship with the customer is going to become, um, you know, even better. And I think, uh, you know, the ethical application of that sharing of data is incredibly important. Um, and, and it's all about right, having the right tools and also being thoughtful about the way that we apply them. So thank you, thank you, Ross. Let me tell you a secret. We have a problem with the with the audio of Ross, so I'm writing him the, the, the questions in WhatsApp. So this <laughs> this sound that was uh, over there is this is the is the result of, of this. We have only five more minutes, but I like to ask Sarah about going back to this question of, of technology neutrality. What, what's your vision on this? Is is, is technology neutral any longer? Uh, this is something from the past. In the future, there will be no debt. So I'd like to know your, your opinion on this. Data technology in specific is a force multiplier. And a great example is that uh, insights driven organization will grow at least seven times faster than global GDP. But uh, equally, technology can be misused. And uh, of course, uh, uh, Oscar was saying this before, people play a big role here. And let's remember ourselves. Today we have so, so much information that the challenge is to identify, uh, is to identify what is fake and what is uh, true. And let me give you an example, very relevant in these COVID times. Uh, Johns Hopkins posts uh, frequently updated COVID uh, cases data. And Tableau, back in, um, back in March, launched a COVID-19 research hub uh, with uh, the same data, but reshaped for use in Tableau. These public data sets are very useful for public health professionals, authorities, uh, etc. They make data from multiple data sources easy to use um, and uh, can enable quick development of visualizations uh, of local cases, etc. But at the same time, let's be honest, the stakes are high around how we communicate about this epidemic to the wider public. Visualizations are powerful for communicating, but also can mislead, misinform, and, uh, in, uh, and create panic. Uh, we are in the middle of a complete information overload uh, with hourly cases, updates, and endless streams uh, of information. And, Epidemic uh, data isn't a data set to play with just to have something to show off on Twitter, right? Uh, for this reason, Tableau had the need and decided, it was a people decision, uh, to create a list of considerations for the users of this data set. We asked the users uh, to consider if what they are creating serves an actual information need uh, to the public. Uh, does it add value to the audience and uncovers new information? If not, perhaps uh, the analysis created uh, should be for their own individual usage. So thank you. I will close the, 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 this panel with, with Nicolas, with your vision on, on, on this, on this uh, neutrality, but thinking a little bit more in the future. So it's, uh, in your opinion, I think it's not easy to, to give answers about the future, but uh, you're close in the panel, so the future is yours. Uh, what, what do you expect from, 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 from the future and from this neutrality and this ethical aspect uh, we're talking about? All right, so thank you for entrusting me with the future. I'll try to take care, good care of it as much as I can. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, I think everybody has said it. Technology by itself is neutral in the sense that your previous speaker 
in the previous talk that I was watching up from JP Morgan expressed it. Technology is a way to enhance humans' decisions, but it needs uh, verification from humans. Continuously predicting and getting feedback from humans to make better decisions, to make better usage. So the technology is neutral. The usage is very impactful. And hence, not neutral, at least as unneutral as who the people are that are using it for whatever end. Um, and then it, since you mentioned the future, not being neutral, being impactful can also be useful. It can also be really geared towards uh, beneficial usage for the, for the community or for the society. From that perspective, we've just last weekend, uh, two days ago, Saturday, we were doing uh, with Databricks a very big climbathon hackathon with a, a lot, uh, a number of insurance companies and another of uh, climate ONGs all around Europe to try and get a better understanding of how these different models would impact, how the different climate will evolve, what are different actions uh, that satiety could be taken or different ways that we could model and better understand how this would go. And this is a very simple example. Of course, it is uh, simplistic and, and meant to be very uh, you know, naive in nature in the way I express it. But from that neutrality perspective, just to get just to take the other side where I agree that you know, technology is always a competitive advantage and it could be used in the wrong way, it can also be very much used to help us get a better grasp on the understanding of our context and maybe shaping the way in, our, in which our society is going to develop itself and also organize itself going forward by giving us a way to not only make you know, decisions based on a limited number of events that we as humans can take in, but probably a much larger number of events that machines can probably help us understand and digest much better to try and take decisions that are much more complete and from that perspective, maybe even more impactful. So I'll try and leave you with a note of something as positive of the use cases I can find for technology. Okay, good, good job, Nicholas, because it was not an, uh, an easy question. So thank you to the six of you. Uh, sorry, sorry, for because we have a, a, a small problem with the, with the audio. Uh, so sure, next time will be much better. So thanks to, 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 to you, the six of you. And for the rest of the people, we'll be back in five minutes. With